Waste plastic is a significant global problem. Finding economically viable ways to keep it from entering the ecosystem is an ongoing challenge. Through this video, we will demonstrate a simple, low-cost process to convert waste plastic into a fuel oil that is a suitable replacement for diesel or kerosene. The University of Kentucky Appropriate Technology and Sustainability Research Group, together with our partners, has developed a processor we call the trash to tank or 3T process. The process starts with collecting suitable waste plastic. The types of plastic that are suitable for the process include high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene. High density polyethylene carries recycle number two and includes items such as milk jugs, plastic furniture, and grocery bags. Low density polyethylene carries recycle number four and includes items such as plastic bags, molded carriers, trays, and certain molded packing materials. Polypropylene carries recycle number five and includes items such as bottle caps, lunch boxes, and margarine containers. Polystyrene carries recycle number six and includes items such as disposable cutlery, drink lids, and straws, disposable coffee cups, and packing foam. The trash to tank process can be successfully run with any of these plastics alone or as a mixture. Note that the PET plastic, the type of plastic found in water and soda bottles, cannot be used as it will result in an unusable product. When the appropriate plastic is used, the resulting oil is a sulfur-free fuel that can be directly used in a diesel engine without any modification. The 3T process consists of four main parts, the 20 liter rocket stove, batch retort, thermal couple and reader, and the condensing bath. The process can be assembled with common hand tools. The batch retort should be fitted with a lid, discharge piping, and the thermal couple and reader. The batch retort is placed inside the rocket stove. A bucket or jerry can may be used for a condensing bath. This equipment must be provided by the user. Begin by unscrewing the bolt that is connected to the lid retainer and remove the lid. Fill the retort with plastic to the desired level, but make sure the plastic does not touch the lid. While replacing the lid, make sure the rubber gasket is still in place. Make sure everything is connected securely and remains tightly sealed. Reattach the lid retainer and screw back together. Ensure all fittings are tight to prevent leaks. After placing the retort back into the rocket stove, make sure that it is steady and level. Add water into the condensing bath and place it under the vent pipe, making sure that the pipe is submerged in three to four centimeters of water. Ensure that the thermocouple is plugged into the reader. Cut wood to the desired length, but make sure the width is small enough to fit inside the fuel chute. Begin by placing tinder inside the fuel chute of the rocket stove. Light the fire. Add wood to the rocket stove as needed to maintain a steady fire. While heating, monitor the condensing bath to make sure that you are getting a bubble rate of one bubble per second. When adding wood, there will be ash created. Remove the ash by sliding the metal drawer from below the fuel chute. Be careful not to burn yourself. To produce a constant rate of fuel, 
keep the fire at a temperature between 250 and 300 degrees C. Once the retort runs out of plastic, there will be no bubbling and the temperature will rise at a rapid pace. Begin the shutdown process by removing all firewood from the fuel chute. Remove the condensing bath from under the vapor discharge pipe. Remove the retort from the rocket stove, being careful not to burn yourself. To recover the fuel oil, begin by pouring off the top layer of fuel from the water. Be careful not to let any water escape with the fuel or the process of separation will have to be restarted. Collect the fuel in a separate dry container that can be closed off from the environment. Fuel remaining in the condensing bath can simply be collected after the next run. Unscrew the retainer lid from the retort. Open the lid of the retort and look inside the barrel. If there is remaining plastic in the retort, leave it in place for the next run. If there is ash inside the retort, turn the barrel upside down to empty the contents. The process is now ready for the next batch.